What's up guys, welcome back to my weekly trading reflection. It's week 18 and I need to be talking a little bit more silent now because my family is sleeping. We're going on vacation tomorrow, so I'm making this on Friday, but you'll probably see this on Sunday. Anyways, as usual, I'll go over all my trades this week and then we'll go over all my lessons. I'm sorry if this is going to be a long ass video. I think it will because I've just written down so many things I learned this week. It was a super educational week in terms of lessons, mistakes, etc. But um, yeah, I'm just doing this for myself so I can look back at it and really ingrain all these things into my head. So yeah, without further ado, let's just first start with my trades. I think that's better. So starting off with a Monday loss, I took this trade. Uh, the reasons for it was because we swept some buy side right here. We displaced lower, disrespected a fair value gap right here. I was just looking for a entry in the premium to then target lower. But looking at it now, it has really not enough structure to validate this trade, right? So what happens here? I FOMO entered right there with really tight stops. And remember from maybe you watched my previous videos, if this is the manipulation, I should put my stop here, right? This is not a clear manipulation, not a clear displacement. We never break through a low. So this is a bad trade. Um, literally, if it's not really clear, don't take it. Also, we were bullish on the higher time frame and also in very bad market conditions because look at this, we have a very big move down and then a very big move up without forming any proper structure actually indicating that we are actually going higher. This is just not good market conditions. Whenever you see like up and down, reaching for buy side, reaching for sell side and all over the place, it's just not good. And you see we do this just for the rest of yeah the day. It's just really bad price action. So anyways, this was my very bad trade on Monday. I spawned into losses. I think I lost my top step account um, just due to over trading. I also traded the last 30 minutes of the day. So that's also a big lesson. Never trade at like 3.30. I mean, never open new trades from 3.30 to uh, 4 p.m. EST because like there's like a lot of slippage and it's not recommended to, 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 to trade then because like the market is about to close. Um, also switch my bias here, not good. And um, yeah, just really, I like I said, previous video, whenever you are going into trading Monday, you had your whole weekend where you was like, oh man, I want to take a trade. I want to go back into trading. Then Monday, you just want to take a trade because you want to take a trade. And that is this type of trade, right? Just really just force setup without really any clear reason why we should go lower. My reason was we should go to equilibrium after sweeping, sweeping this buy side, but like pff, anything else, no manipulation. So I mean, bad trade. So let's delete this one. Let's go to Tuesday win first. Um, let's take a look. This was a really, really nice setup. Look at this. Um, we want to have a clear bias, a clear draw liquidity for a trade. And this is the best trap type of draw liquidity I have. This is low resistance liquidity run. So trend line liquidity, very nice target. We have some buy side. We have a manipulation in the micro cycles manipulation. And then we have a break of structure. We have our first fair value gap that's getting tapped here. And then we move lower, just target this. This is the target of this model of this internal oh my god sorry okay i'm back so this was the target of this um internal cell model um and so yeah you just want to take everything off here um i wanted to put my stop first here that's a really bad r but um when we respect that first entry meaning this for value gap i should put my stop here so that's also a lesson um Really nice trade, clear draw liquidity. We have engineered some um, buy side liquidity here. We sweep it and then we should move to the other type of liquidity, right? We align it with time, with the micro cycles. We tap the minute 15 fair value gap while we sweep it. So a really nice trade that was on Tuesday. Then my loss on Tuesday was right after. This was a really nice setup also, but I missed this trade. And after I missed this trade, 
um, it made me go into a loss because I was a little bit mad that I missed this trade. So again, here the draw liquidity was clear, stacked sell side liquidity. What do we do right here? I was expecting um, price um, giving me another sell model. So this was the sell side of the curve. But um, what happened is um, I missed this trade. Why was this a good trade? Because we retraced back to equilibrium uh, of this range to premium. We tap a fair value gap here. We have a big SMT. We have another internal stop rate. And um, then we have a displacement and I just market enter because this is a good trade. We never end up taking this low, which is like, because we have such bad market conditions because we were literally also just hovering around this low. We don't take it out. So that's when you expect like poor market conditions. But also you can see this as this is just generating more sell side liquidity before then later. We're going to run all of this um, at once. So after I missed this trade, um, I'm just going to delete everything like here. After I missed this trade, um, I wanted to enter because I thought, okay, these equal lows are next. There's no way we're not going to take out these lows um, and the other low to the left. So I wanted to re-enter at the premium here. But um, the problem is I was just so forced in my bias and the first kind of displacement I saw um, was my market entry with my stop here. But this is just so bad. We don't have like a, a clear manipulation. We don't have a clear displacement because this is not a displacement. I realized because we don't break through a low. We should break through this low. Also maybe disrespect the fair value gap or order block. But here we're still respecting this order block. So a really bad trade because I was married to my bias and I was not actually seeing what the market i mean i was not accepting what the market was telling me because we had an smt also right here or right here i don't know but there was an smt here indicating that shorts were bad here so um yeah fomo over leverage second chance entry marrying the model without looking at what price is actually doing no clear manipulation as i said and displacement and a bullish smt and a few candles further it should have been my signal for close my position yeah so after i see this i should really just close my position because this is just indicating that we just use this as a retracement to again go higher i should now wait for it just to run to my stop loss but yeah really bad trade because i missed this trade it happens we are humans um, learning from this is what will make you grow of course so that's what I'm trying to do so then we're going to go to the next trades on Wednesday Thursday or Friday let's go to Wednesday's loss um, it was a paper trade because after I lost my funded um, I decided to paper trade and just really build those really um, good habits and I noticed that whenever I trade lower size it's just so much easier to really take good trades and don't do stupid stuff um, so here a good example of actually a good trade but it didn't work out even though the structure is looking clean we had a clear buy model we have an SMT we have the macro so we should expect price to run to buy side um, and I want to just enter after I saw this internal sweep and displacement disrespecting this fair value gap so I entered on this fair value gap but it was not a good trade uh, I mean it was a good trade but it end up hitting stop loss because maybe we swept buy side already um, before I had my entry but that shouldn't be a reason because it looked actually clean so it was a good loss in my opinion only thing that was not good is because maybe the market conditions we were just really really high I think at all-time highs I'm not sure yeah we were at all-time highs maybe and um, yeah just bad market conditions also maybe yeah this was the reason i forgot we didn't tap any fair value gap um and we should really just fill the inefficiencies um rebalance to equilibrium if we go back to this range we see that this is the equilibrium and we never end up tapping that and here whenever we tap that that's when we go actually higher right so um that was on wednesday actually a good loss because i like this setup um, but maybe some few things that made this not a good one. Wednesday, New York Q3 missed trade. This was a good trade, but I ended up missing it. But I'm still showing because it just builds conviction with my trading system. What we got right here, we have a minute 15 fair value gap. We tap inside of it, sweep this low, SMT, internal stop rate also. Then 
we know that the draw is higher because we have this high, we have this high, we have these highs. So it looks really clean to go up because we're also bullish on the higher time frame. We are entering this macro, so we should expect price to fill in fair value gap inside that macro and just run to whatever the draw liquidity is. So that what's, that's actually what's happening right here, right? We're also below the true micro session open. Um, and the cycles, I think, let me just take a look, also aligned. So if you take a look at this, we go back. You see that the micro cycles we have an X, A, M, D, right? So you have a, just some continuation, then a accumulation because we just go down and up, manipulation sweeping this low, SMT, and then distribution. So time and price alliance, aligning it with a buy model. Below the true micro session opens where you would enter inside of this um, cycle. So yeah that end up being a good mistrade um, and you see once everything is ready we just bump um, so yeah really happy with just analysis in hindsight of course but it shows that uh, my trading style actually works and it makes me feel happy <laughs> so that was Wednesday's mistrade let me just delete this replay mode uh, let's go to Thursday uh, 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 let's see let's see let's see yeah this was on Thursday, same thing. I mean, I'm just gonna repeat myself because this is the way I, how I trade, but um, we had a nice buy model because we had some nice highs being stacked up right there. It's just really nice to target as liquidity. This is low resistance liquidity because whenever we take out one high, we should go above all these other highs. We have this clean, clean um, London high, I think, yeah, it was London high. Where we could go to so what happens is we had like this whole thing here is like an hour for a wick and the equilibrium of a wick can be used as um, a point of interest so wicks are basically also just seen as fair value gaps in my opinion so that's also nice because we have manipulation inside here indicating that we actually respect this hour for a wick we connect this to a buy model and basically, um, if we replay the time, the quarterly cycles also, we see that we have a really, really nice setup. This was the best setup of the week, in my opinion. You see that on the whole New York session, this is the whole New York session. We have an accumulation here, the gray box. Then we have the manipulation here inside of this wick, right? So this point of interest, SMT. Also, right at the news, we had this SMT, so the news was just um, giving us the manipulation. Then we have a displacement up, breaking structure with this high. What happens at market open? We should distribute now. We should distribute because we are inside that distribution of the 90 minute cycles. Sorry, but we can also still have a manipulation inside of distribution whenever market opens, right? So that was happening right here. What happens here is we have a range here. We stack up all of this low resistance liquidity for then stop out early buyers inside equilibrium, tapping a minute 15 fair value gap inside of the micro cycles manipulation. So this is also divided into four. And whenever you see this down move, it's actually exactly in the manipulation quarter as well. So really, really nice setup. Um, but I think, yeah, I didn't take this trade, but I saw it in hindsight. Whenever you see an SMT, you can just long here. Why? Because everything just makes sense. We tap from a nice key level. We have an SMT displacement. We're entering market open the distribution quarter of this New York session. We go back to equilibrium of this range, right when manipulation happens inside of this distribution quarter, we're below the true open, below the true micro session open, tapping also a minute 15 fair value gap. This is basically a line that's indicating the opening of the minute 15 fair value gap. Sweep below, yeah, if you see then just a bullish candle, you can long towards the target of this whole buy model. So a really, really clean trade, um, best trade of um, this week everything just aligns price and time aligns um so yeah really good trade that was thursday then on friday let me take a quick look delete this replay uh, uh, uh. this was on friday actually today now that i'm recording this what happens we tap inside of an hourly fair value gap 
Again, I attach everything to a market maker buy or sell model. We are stacking up all these highs here that are never getting taken out. So I expect that after we take out this low um, and we see a displacement, first entry is getting respected. Um, and then once we are actually here, I can really know that this is the next trial liquidity because we are still bullish. Um, I'm just looking for a reaccumulation. Um, of this buy model to then target this buy side liquidity and so what happens is if we replay time again the quarterly theory what happens here is we form an SMT um, right here ES swept this low I think um, and NQ didn't so we have a buy model we tap from this hourly fairly gap sweep this low first entry of the buy model getting respected I wait for another manipulation to then target the last move and I see an SMT, so that's a manipulation. I see a fair value gap, one minute fair value gap getting this place through. And then I just market enter right there, targeting this high. I don't know if I can see the executions, but I executed this on my paper account. Let me take a look. Uh, yeah, I don't know if you guys can see it. Maybe I need to delete the replay mode. Yeah, you see it right here. So I entered here and I sold here. Um, and the RR really doesn't matter. Maybe it's only too good. If you're so confident in a trade, which I was, um, I took it um, below the true open, um, which is also good if you are really sure that the bias of the session is bullish, then whenever you long below it, below the true open, it's a really good trade. And you see, we just end up ripping uh, the whole rest of the day. So yeah, that was today. Maybe I had one more trade that was on the micro chart let me take a look one more trade on Thursday um, which was a paper trade but also a winning trade I think yeah it's also a really nice trade utilizing the micro cycles so what do we got right here um, we let me just go back in price we open the last quarter of New York session which is from 10 30 to 12 you see and so inside of this 90 minutes, I use the micro cycles to give me a good bias. So what happens here in the first quarter, let me take a look, make this smaller. This is the first quarter of the um, last quarter of New York. So this is 22.5 minutes. We end up just continue, continuing this bullish um, order flow. So this is an X, then this is an accumulation because we just end up accumulating here. You see, beautiful. Now we should expect a manipulation. So because we are bullish, I expect a manipulation inside of this fair value gap because we're, I mean, like I said, we were bullish. Um, or if we end up sweeping this high, I'm, I'm bearish because then the manipulation um, is at the highs. But because the manipulation is still at the lows here, this is the manipulation, this green, we manipulate the lows, we have an SMT, this indicates that the manipulation is lower. And now I'm um, just attaching this to a buy model again. I expect this to be the target. Um, and then the distribution opens and we can enter a trade, right? Whenever we just have a favela gap, whatever. If it's a good risk, you can take it because this should be the protected low, right? So this is with a new... Um, quarter open with this is from 12 so don't really pay attention to this because you only need this but we open this macro so we should expect like a nice run and we had that right here so um yeah just be confident that you're not gonna get stopped out this is your stop loss not this one um so yeah whenever you're still below this true micro session open which is like the like the um opening of this second quarter of each cycle that's where you want to long below if you're bullish, right? So um, I just um, executed here. I don't know if I can see the executions as well. Let me take a look. Um, no, I don't know why you can't see the executions. Um, like if you did it previous days, I think it, it will disappear. But anyways, I took this trade on paper, so I'm not going to flex with it. So uh, yeah, really good trade because again, 
what do we do we are bullish we tap inside a minute 15 for a valley gap this line here we have an smt we align it with time because the micro cycle is indicating that okay the manipulation happens here so i'll look at this as an internal buy model target this high and yeah we're below this true micro session open so any entry below here is good um i mean you still have to have a good risk to reward so anyways this was my trading week sorry if this is just like all over the place um but yeah it's just mainly for myself to go back um and see my progress but let's now go over all my lessons um so lessons from this week february 5th to 9th first of all wrong funded behavior in the beginning of the week why because i was up like 2k two weeks ago on my top step account and then last week i like lost most of it so that's why my drawdown now is like really really close to 50k it was like um 49 so that means that um i was really close this week to just preaching my drawdown and because of this i was like oh it doesn't really matter now i'm just gonna go high size um and it's gonna rebuild anyways i'm gonna get another reset um of my account i'm just gonna buy another one Bro, this is just so stupid. If I'm going to think like this, I'm just a little pussy. Because if I'm going to do this when I'm actually having a private investor trading capital, I'm not going to act like this, right? I'm here to build good habits, good um, discipline and taking good decisions. And this, just like taking a finite account as a joke and just doing high size the last week because it's going to rebuild anyway. I'm going to get a new account anyway. This is just stupid behavior i should not think like this so that's the first thing um then don't trade the last 30 minutes before close it's really really bad to trade that uh, in my opinion from my experience because the spreads and the slippage is a little bit high and we have a lot of volatility anyways if you are in a trade it doesn't really matter but if you're just entering that trade um just before like that hourly close of the futures uh, market it's just not in my opinion not worth it to scalp especially here so then be in a flow state with that i mean that you always need to keep track of everything that's happening on your charts so whenever you're charting don't do anything else don't try to do something else for your business or for school whatever always just watch the charts if you're watching the charts just i mean it sounds so stupid but i mean watch everything that you want to see watch for pdrs getting respected watch for manipulation really focus on seeing displacement on um, keeping track of time because you're gonna miss a lot of trades i miss a lot of trades now i see them in hindsight um, and i'm really feeling like stupid for this because i can't see them when they're actually forming but i guess this just comes with experience so um it's um, nevertheless really important to just do nothing else than watching the charts and keeping track of whatever that's happening and don't just like watch candles print and think like what do i need to see right you always have to have something in your head what do i need to see before entering into the trade what's the reason why i should enter trade now and i mean that way you will spot better opportunities and cut out those stupid trades that actually don't make sense right so you only need sorry you only need a sliver of the pie with that i mean big moves don't matter big rrs don't matter in my opinion the only thing that matters is that you take that little bit of the move of the day or the session that you're really really confident in because that way you're just building good habits you really know why the markets move um, and if you have like a big move you can even take like one percent catch 1% of that move and still make a lot of money because at the end of the day it's trading is super scalable and the only thing that matters is size like how much risk you're putting in um, instead of risk reward right so it has nothing to do with the move it has to do with how confident you are in where the markets are going and when and basically be able to position yourself when this happens right so confidence is key if you don't have confidence you need to build confidence by playing lower size using low risk then you can infinitely leverage this game like i said size is the most important thing not risk to reward you can catch a sliver of the pie and still make tons of profits 
So just keep in mind that whenever you're consistent, whenever you really build yourself as a good trader, it is immensely scalable, right? You can leverage this game like crazy. So then I will get to a point when I have market experience and when I'll know that I have seen this like thousand times and I know this is what I'm looking for, right? So if it's not really, really clear, if it's not like, oh, I've seen this a lot, this is a really clear setup, don't touch the markets. It's as simple, right? Don't touch the markets. So this should be your goal as a trader, right? Constantly just take trades um, with lower size if you're not confident in it. And whenever you see it, like a lot of the times working out and you're building confidence, you're building conviction in your setup, right? And this is your end goal of a trader. You need to only take trades whenever you have like the feeling, oh, I've seen this so many times. I'm going to smash this. This is a clear A plus setup. Then next up, sitting on your hands is not building discipline. What I mean with this is that, let's say, for example, this week I had like a few days where I would just do nothing because I wanted to wait for a good, a good setup. Be patient, only take good setups. But that doesn't mean that you're building discipline whenever you're just staring at your charts like a nerd for eight hours. In my opinion, what I realized is that you only build discipline um, with your reaction after your first trade of the day. So let's say you sit on your on your hands for the whole day but then at the end of the day you take your first trade let's say it's a loss your reaction after that loss is what makes you build discipline if you're just gonna stop trading for the day that's the best thing you can do you have made a good decision go sleep and wake up for the next day but if you don't do that and you start over trading over like revenge trading whatever that's when you um yeah can't control yourself and when you're not building good discipline so whenever you take that first trade what's your reaction after that if it's a win or a loss what do you do after that that's what builds discipline not just staring at the charts and sitting on your hands right because everyone can just do nothing right it's really easy to do to do nothing the only thing that's hard is doing anything whenever you emotions are involved so whenever you take a trade right what you're gonna do after that so yeah then after that, let's see, use other context and knowledge. I know when I try to look at AMDX, XAMD for cycles. So yeah, what I mean with this is, let's say there is news on 8.30, then I can know that it's an XAMD, right? On the Newark cycle. So basically use other things to then um, know what the quarterly theory cycle is. Um, so I mean news, maybe some other factors um, but don't just look at whatever is q1 and then base the rest off of it you can just make a puzzle from it in my opinion what works for me and then you can know what um, um, the cycle is right so the next up false conviction this is a really important topic because um, whenever you take a trade that ends up being a winner it doesn't mean it's a good trainer right so whenever you make money but you actually didn't deserve it that is building false conviction because the next day, the next week, you're going into the markets. You think that you made good decisions because you made money, right? But money actually doesn't mean anything. The only thing that matters is that you take good trades and basically trades that you can explain why is this a good trade, right? So if you end up making money with like a shitty setup that you can't explain, it's basically building false conviction and it's tricking your mind to um, yeah, do this again when you see this, but this is not a good trade, right? So then next up, wait for it to be ready. So basically very simple, when everything aligns, um, you should only take a trade, right? If something looks not good, um, don't take it. Really simple set, um, but I'm gonna go deeper into this later. So then next up, valid displacement. I took a bad trade um because i didn't wait for a valid displacement i thought a valid displacement is only just a big candle explosive leaving behind a fair valley gap um disrespecting some opposing pd race but the most important thing i forgot actually which is like beginner is that it should break a low or a high aggressively right so i didn't do that we were still inside of a range so let's say um you're still inside this accumulation and I thought this big candle here is like a displacement because this was like a whole candle but if it didn't break below this low it's not a displacement right so we should go below 
like really explosive breaking the lows of this accumulation so that we are ex outside of this um, to be displacement, right? I mean, you probably think I'm stupid, but like this is just some beginner mistakes that you make if you're progressing into your journey because you keep forgetting maybe things. And so yeah, I need to keep remembering myself that we should break a low or a high outside of the accumulation phase um, to consider it as a valid displacement, right? So then the 15 second time frame, like a lot of people, they say that you only need the five minute time frame, you only need the 15 minute time frame to be profitable. And I realized that that's not really what I want because I really want to just have the best risk reward. I want to really know how the markets move. And that means that I also need to know how the lower time frame aligns with the higher time frame. So whenever you take trades, on the lower time frame models that align with the higher time frame bias with the higher time frame draw and models like this is just really what i'm aiming for and if i have a good setup on the one minute like a buy model i can take a 15 second fairly gap right i shouldn't be scared of this if everything aligns on the higher time frame right i'm not going to be using the 15 second for buy models and um, indicating structure only for like maybe some PD race like a Fairvalley gap to trade off of if I'm trading a one minute buy model so 15 second just one minute uh, don't be afraid of the lower time frame in my opinion if you really want to trade with precision I think you really need the lower time frame because I don't think that you can catch big moves on the higher time frame um, like you can do on the lower time frame so that's just my opinion I'm really gonna focus on um yeah trading fractal markets so everything is inside of everything right remember um and i want to trade the lower time frame model that exactly aligns with the higher time frame with another higher time frame with another higher time frame and basically be like super precise and catch the markets at the really really bottom um to then yeah catch big moves right even though it's not important to catch big moves but you get what I'm saying. I just want to be a really good trader, and I think you need the lower time frame for that. So then, next up, offensive versus defensive. You need to know when to play offensive and defensive. Whenever there's good market conditions, you should really just put your normal risk. Whenever there is not good market conditions, so this means when nothing gets respected, when we have no structure indicating a valid bias. And if it's just all over the place and the higher time frame just looks low probable, that's when you need to play defensive. So the market always gives you opportunity. Um, and I learned this from Justin. A lot of these things I learned from Justin. Um, he's like a, a really um, good teacher that helped me the last couple of months to really level up my trading. Um, I'm linking um, his um, YouTube down below. It's called Justin Werlein. But basically what he says is, the market constantly gives you opportunity and this means that whenever there's low market conditions the opportunity is that you should stay away whenever there's high probable conditions the opportunity is that you can trade right so opportunity doesn't mean money opportunity means what can you do to build your discipline in this kind of opportunity right so yeah i hope that makes sense but going further risk management over trading revenge trading and only taking setups that are dump clear is the only way that's stopping my success now just want to keep it in my head this is the only thing that's stopping me from my success then next up smaller pda race i didn't actually realize and use small fair value gaps earlier um, and i see them working out a lot um, so i'm gonna use them um, even if it's like this fair value gap even if there's like just a tiny space like this i'm still going to be using it as a fair value gap because i've seen it this week work out a lot that we just tap it with a wick and then use it as a pd array to then go lower or higher so yeah looking into that so then these are some rules i got from justin also go into every trading day expecting to not take a trade two going to every single trade expecting to lose why? Because when you go in with expectations, you're automatically looking for most of the time lower quality opportunity because you just want to put something on the table because there is nothing for you to do. You're just bored and you just want to press a button because you want to press a button, right? That's why it's best to hop off after two hours of no action 
to avoid this, right? Don't think I wasted time, so I need to find a setup. No, take a break and regain patience to then come back and revisit the market. Whenever you're just constantly looking for opportunity, you're gonna take trades that are not good, okay? Three, go into every single trading day with the primary focus of building good habits. What are those good habits? First of all, having good position sizing, not over leveraging, not over trading, only taking high quality setups. And lastly, recognize when to step away, when to play offensive and defensive, right? Like we talked about, there are times in which your model will work perfectly and there's times which it won't. I initially thought that, oh, my model is not working, so my strategy doesn't work. Wrong mindset. Your model doesn't work because the market conditions are not there. You didn't recognize that it was not a good day or time to trade, right? And like the markets are all, all always unpredictable. So you should always accept to lose um, your trade. Don't think that your model is the um, like the, the holy grail because nothing is. Only you are the holy grail. So then don't take trades based off of your observations, what you think it will do. Take what the market is telling, showing you. That's why you need to set rules for yourself. Even if you're long or short, you need to see things first getting checked in your rules before actually taking a trade because then there is an actual reason for it to work out right you don't want to be taking trades just because you think it will break this low you think that it will go higher no there needs to be a reason there needs to be something checked off what has to happen do we have a manipulation do we have a displacement do we have a pd rate do we have everything you need that's when you take a trade not because you oh we are close to that low so we should take out that low wrong mindset right you need to have rules you need to have a why if you can't explain why you took a trade it's not a good trade okay then the key to consistency is cutting out the small losses that's really something important you just need to have less losses and keep your winners the same that's when you can really increase your win rate okay so my camera just died but we're almost done so i'm just gonna keep going um i was talking about this whenever you have like a feeling like oh this trade might work out maybe it's a good trade these are the trades that are like maybe it will work out trades and these are the things you need to avoid don't trade the trades that are like oh maybe it will work right you should not trade this it should be dumb clear that this is a good trade don't take trades where you think oh maybe it will work right then why do you take the trade um like I talked about, there has to be a reason. What has to happen first? You need to have rules. What is the reason? There needs to be like a validation to take a trade, right? Um, I'm kind of repeating myself from here, but I just want to make this really, really clear. If you can't explain why, you're trading based off intuition and emotions, which is not good. Then um, you can have conviction and think something, but the only thing that matters is if the market validates what you think. Then the best setups is when you align the high time frame distribution with the low time frame model. What I talked about, right? Price is fractal. If you end up catching a one minute buy model instead of a one hour buy model, and we are about to have the expansion of the one hour time frame, and then you position yourself inside that lower time frame model instead of a high time frame expansion, that's when you take the best trades, right? then you can be bullish going into the day and take a long, oh sorry, this should be a short. So you can be bullish going into the day and take a short and you can be bearish going into the day and take a long. This means that whatever the market is telling you, you're gonna react to it. You're not gonna predict this whenever you have a bullish bias. You can end up taking a short because the market is telling you why you should take a short, right? Then setting the goal of quitting something forever will set you up for failure. You need to say, I'm not going to do it today. You need to have rules. Trick your mind. You, If you have like a, a, a thing you do almost every time, let's say revenge trading, you're not just going to help it by saying, oh, I'm not going to revenge trade forever now. You need to have a rule every day and speak it out for yourself that, let's say, after one losing trade, you don't trade, right? This way you will trick your mind because these rules will prevent you from keeping that mistake. And you saying that you won't do it forever will not help you, right? So take it one day at a time so you'll build those habits and eventually it will become second nature. So really build in those rules because these rules will trick your mind to not do it forever. 
then don't trade after objective is taking. Let's say um, you are inside of a buy model. Um, let's see, let's say in the buy model, and we are taking out the high, the objective of the buy model. Then you should expect like a chop, right? It, I mean, most of the times it will not offer high probability conditions after the objective is taken of a buy model, of a sell model, whatever, of an AMD, whatever thing you trade after you have your draw liquidity met. Don't take a trade anymore um, for that session or for the day, right? Then, um, if you're not constantly trading, you are still improving. Don't think that if you are not trading for the whole day and just sitting on your hands, that you're just wasting your time. Because you are not. You are not wasting your time if you're not trading. Because trading is about not trading. If you don't trade, it's actually good, right? You're still building experience watching the markets. You don't need to take a trade. You just need to build good habits, take good decisions, and build your discipline, right? So don't think and trick your mind thinking you wasted time because you didn't trade. Trading is about not trading. Then one tick sweep is not a clear manipulation. Let's say whenever we have equal lows, or maybe we sweep it like a little bit. I don't consider this as a sweep. I still want to see price going lower because this is just engineering liquidity. Um, if I'm seeing a sweep, let's say I want to see a sweep here, then I really want it to be like this, right? A clear manipulation to then go lower. So yeah, that's about one tick sweep. Um, I don't like that. Um, I want to see clear manipulation. Then I added a last reason why the markets move that really is going to help me like have a better bias. And so for the ones that follow me, why the markets move, I learned this from Justin Wehrlein. It's super helpful. First of all, we always rebalance to equilibrium or we rebalance to inefficiencies like fair value gaps or we going to hunt sell side or buy side. But now I have a fourth thing and that is we are engineering liquidity because the market also moves to engineer liquidity to then take it out, right? Because market moves from liquidity to liquidity. So I think this fourth thing is really uh, the game changer um, because it makes sense, right? The market moves to hunt liquidity, to go to fair value gaps, to go to equilibrium, but also to engineer liquidity. So this means uh, making equal highs, making equal lows, making low resistance liquidity, um, etc. Right? We can engineer liquidity because that's how the market moves. So whenever everything aligns about why markets move, so let's say we are really bullish and we are engineering liquidity, we are going back to equilibrium of this range we are also tapping inside of our value gap. When we have a manipulation then and a displacement, that's when we are ready, right? That's when you're ready. Why? Because first of all, we are tapping inside of our value gap, right? First reason why markets move. We are going back to equilibrium, right? Second reason why markets move. Third reason, we are engineering liquidity, right? And then fourth reason, we are going f to hunt buy side and sell side. And here we hunt sell side so we should go to buy side because we engineered this liquidity we have everything we need everything looks ready and this is when we have the best trades right whenever you see a manipulation displacement then then um you should expect a good trade right but there has to be a reason for us to manipulate in this case the reason is we tapped inside discount we are inside the fair value gap we have engineered liquidity bias is bullish let's say the quarterly theory is lying we should have a distribution this is when we have a valid reason to manipulate and then take a trade here, whatever on the internal buy model to then target the the low hanging fruit or the external um, highs. Okay, so like I said, you need to then find the model and the manipulation inside the manipulation, right? This is the manipulation, but then here, if you zoom in, if you trade this, you can still have a manipulation here, right? So let's say. We sweep a high, also uh, sorry, a low also right here, and then we have displacement. This is the exact same thing. Uh, sorry, this is the exact same thing as here, right? So you need to find models inside models. Whenever everything aligns on the higher time frame, you should zoom in here. You know your bias is bullish, so you should expect the same thing: manipulation, displacement, and then you catch the best type of trades, right? Then. The seek and destroy model is a new model I learned. Um, basically what it is, is basically you have Asia session, then you have London session, 
and then you have um, new accession and it's basically an expansion model so what it is is basically an accumulation in Asia then in London we take out the low we take out the high and then in New York we take out London's low and London's highs so this is the seek and destroy and whenever this high is taken or um, the model is complete um, you should expect um, choppy price action after that right so that's something um, I can use going uh, into the day to frame my bias whenever I see that in London session the Asia low and high is taken and the low of the London session then in New York session is taken then I should expect the um, the other side to also get taken because we're constantly just seeking liquidity inside of this model right then focus on what works for you don't care about anything else um, if I'm gonna look at other people's opinions about trades don't really like think like oh why didn't I see this uh, why is he so good uh, why um, haven't I noticed this what he draw out don't care about this bro just focus on yourself and um, I realized that the only thing that's gonna make you profitable is yourself so you should follow your own rules um, and not trying to um, add some little things that other people use because it works for them no only do what works for you trade your style and nothing else right then the last thing is I just want to say I'm going into paper trading right now for the rest of next week because I'm on vacation and I just want to build conviction I feel like it's so much better to take um, a break from trading and trade paper to build conviction really apply the concepts you learn and paper trading is just amazing to build experience build conviction build good habits because you're detached from the money and you're really only focusing on becoming a good trader and it's really really hard but we got to do this there's no other way around it whenever you want to be a good trader you should actually focus on becoming a good trader and not focusing on stupid challenges because that will come anyway trust the process we're gonna get there another amazing week a lot of things i learned um and we're gonna keep going until i am profitable so i don't know when that is but i have time <laughs> i'm 20 so <laughs> stick with me i'm gonna get there um, i hope you have an amazing rest of your day Whatever you're doing on your journey, don't give up. I believe in you. We're going to get there. Trust the process. You got this. Peace out.